What's up guys and welcome back to Soft Knowledge Solutions and yes ladies and gentlemen welcome back to Rebirth Island. Welcome to Resurgence, Rebirth Island and Season 3. Ladies and gentlemen all you're going to need to do is follow my guidelines from the beginning to the end. Every step of this video will make your game run much much better. You'll receive much more FPS in the game and I'm going to show you competitive settings. What is the best competitive settings for this game right now at this very moment for Season 3. And all you're going to need to do is follow my guidelines from the beginning to the end of this video and you should be good to go. I can promise you this. Get fucked. Right, let's get into this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we are on our desktop right now. And the first thing I just want to mention is this. If you would like to let me personally optimize your computer for you, if you need an optimization or whatever the case might be, you can go ahead and email me here at the top and just send me an email and then I'll message you my Discord and whatever the case might be. And I do charge a service fee. I do charge a service fee because it actually takes up time and effort from me to be able to optimize your PC for you. And I'll do everything for you. Don't worry. Um, or I could just guide you through everything um, that you need to do. And you should be good to go. I just want to mention that to you guys. My email is here at the top. And you can just email me. All right. So the first thing I highly recommend you go ahead and do is, ladies and gentlemen, please be on your desktop. It doesn't matter if you're running this game through Battle.net or Steam. Just close both of those programs. Please go ahead and close it and be on your desktop. Now, the first thing I highly recommend you go ahead and do is this over here. If you have background apps running, please go ahead and close them. You do not want these things to run while you are playing Call of Duty. It's highly recommended that you close all background apps. Now, I have a CCTV camera running over here. I'm not going to hover over it because then you can actually see my cameras and my location, whatever the case might be. I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to right click on it and then say close window. Now, I don't want to see my cameras and stuff like that while I'm playing the game because it uses resources like my CPU, my RAM and my VRAM usage. So I actually close that program. Now, another thing is Wallpaper Engine, which I'm currently running right now for this background image that I'm running for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, is Wallpaper Engine. Now, what I would suggest you do is you completely just close out of this if you use it. If you don't use it, you are good to go. If you have a still image, you are perfectly fine. But I highly recommend actually closing this. So you go over here, right click on it. I know a lot of people say you should just pause it, then it pauses, and then the picture doesn't move. And you can literally just click on unpause, and then the picture starts moving again. But the best way of doing it is actually going here, right clicking, and say quit, and have a still desktop image with nothing on your desktop. No clutter, no shortcuts, no nothing. If you have shortcuts, go put them in a folder. You should be good to go. Or just delete the shortcuts. You should not have shortcuts on your desktop in the first place. Like if you have multiple Steam games or whatever the case might be, as shortcuts on your desktop. You need to launch Steam and then go to the game itself and then launch it through there. You don't need to launch it through your desktop through a shortcut. Shortcuts actually decreases performance in your Windows. It doesn't matter if you're Windows 10 or 11. It doesn't matter. All right. So the next thing I highly recommend you go ahead and do is go to the start button over here and go to settings and then come over here. All right. You're going to come to gaming, come to game mode and make sure the game mode is turned on. For season three right now, I highly recommend you keep game mode on. Now for season two, it was also on. And then for season one, it was off. All right. So please go ahead and turn that on and then go to graphic settings over here and have hardware accelerated GPU scheduling turned on. Please go ahead and do so. Now, if yours is off and you turn it on, it will ask you to restart your computer. What you're going to do is this. Restart your computer once you've watched this entire video. Then you restart your computer. Because you're going to need to restart it in anyways once you're done with everything I'm about to show you. All right? From the beginning to the end of my video. Please don't skip through it. Because if you're going to miss out on something, your game won't optimize itself. And you want the best out of your machine and your game at the same time. So just watch my entire video and you should be good to go. I'll try and make it short, sweet and simple. I know when I say short, sweet and simple, the video might be 30 minutes or 40 minutes i can't help for that if i'm going to explain everything to you i'm going to need to explain it you know it doesn't matter how long it's going to take i have to explain it to you so you can understand all right so from here you're going to go to the home button and you're going to come to privacy scroll all the way down to the bottom over here and then go to background apps now if you are a windows 10 user like me yes i'm still a windows 10 user i prefer windows 10 Windows 10 has no problems and it's not giving me any problems. So I'll only move over to Windows 11 once I have to move over. Once there's no security features for Windows 10 anymore, once there's no more updates and stuff like that, then I'll move over to Windows 11. Um, whoever's going to leave a comment down below, yo dude, move over to Windows 11, go fuck yourself. I don't want to, I don't need to. Okay, so this is my own personal preference. Cool. Anyways, now, if you're a Windows 11 user, you're going to have to individually disable your background apps one by one. I'm not going to show you how to do that. It's going to make the video even longer. Just go Google how to disable them. If you're a Windows 10 user, you just go from on 
to off and then all of these things over here is going to turn off and not run in the background using your vram your ram and your cpu usage you don't want it to do that you want to switch all of these background apps bullshit off all right from here you're going to go to the home button and then from here, you're going to click on the update and security. Make sure that your Windows is up to date. Now, it doesn't matter if you are a Windows 10 user or Windows 11 user yet again. Please go ahead and check for updates and make sure you have the latest updates for your Windows. It's very important that every time Call of Duty does an update, your Windows needs to be up to date as well. Please go ahead and do that. All right. So as you can see, it's installing a new update for me right now at this very moment. I'm not going to show you how it installs. So let me close out of this. All right. All right, so the next step I highly recommend you go ahead and do is you're going to go to the file explorer like this and you're going to open this up and come to documents and then go to call of duty over here go to players and then go to this file over here that says options for .cod23. right click on it and then say open or you can say open with a notepad or whatever the case might be as long as you can get inside here now these two things are the most important things when it comes to call of duty right now at this very moment it really means a lot in the game if you don't change these things then your game might run normal but not the way it should be running okay and i highly recommend you go ahead and change it right now at this very moment you can put your total cores inside here or you can put your total threads inside here now for season three yet again it's changed it keeps changing i don't know why this is a thing but Every time a new update comes out or every time a new season drops or every time a new update in general comes out, they break their game. Call of Duty smokes a lot of cracks so they don't know what the fuck they're doing themselves. And most of my viewers know this. Most of my subscribers know this. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to put your total threads inside here. Please go ahead and do that. Put your total threads inside here. Now, I have a 14700K. It's got 24 threads. I'm not going to put 24 inside here. Please don't go ahead and do that. If you have anything like 24 threads or 20 threads or whatever the case might be, please go ahead and put 16 there because the highest value you can put inside here is 16. So if you have 16 threads or higher, put 16 inside here. So let's say you've got a 6 core 12 thread CPU, right? Then you're going to put 12 inside here. You get my point. So let's say you've got a 4 core 8 thread CPU. You're going to put 8 inside here for eight threads so it's the amount of threads that your cpu has you're going to put that a total amount inside you if you don't know how to do that just google your cpu it's very easy to fucking do i'm not going to spoon feed you anymore right so 16 for me because i have a 24 thread cpu all right from here this one plays a very big role in the game itself now i don't recommend to change this this used to be a thing where you can copy this over into that and then you have double the VRAM of your GPU or almost double the VRAM of your GPU. Once you launch the game, you can actually see it here at the bottom that you have double the VRAM by changing that value into this by pasting it in there and you have double the value of VRAM. So you make Call of Duty think that you have more VRAM, but Call of Duty will then start fucking out. It will not work or it will crash randomly or whatever the case might be. So don't do that. It's not a thing anymore. Just leave it as is. I highly recommend leaving it like this. If you don't have it like mine, please go ahead and type it in. So it's 0 0.800000, leave it like that. That is 80% on the VRAM scale inside the game. Now, there is more things to this, okay? So the GPU driver that I'm currently running is completely different to the latest driver that is out right now. And I'm not running it. The reason why I'm not running it, because it's not optimized for Call of Duty. The driver I'm running now at this very moment is optimized for Call of Duty. So I highly recommend if you are a person that runs a 40 series card, this driver right here, it favors this driver, which is 551.52. It favors this driver. Literally, it's telling me that it recommends a lower driver. Okay. But that's just a config file telling me that. Um, you need to know exactly for what GPU, what driver it prefers. Unfortunately, Call of Duty won't tell you this. Activision won't post something on their posts, like on Reddit or whatever the case might be, what driver you should be on for what GPU. But for 40 series cards, this is the driver you should be on. This is the driver I'm on right now. The newer driver actually makes my game run way worse. So I highly recommend using this driver. I'm pretty sure people can get away with the 30 series. If you have a 30 series card or a 20 series card as well, getting onto this driver over here, just go to Google and type in NVIDIA driver download 551.52 and then download 
load and install this driver. Please go ahead and do so, and it will overwrite the current graphics card drivers that you currently have. Please go ahead and do so. Roll back your drivers. If you aren't having any problems with the latest driver that is out and you see your game is running perfectly fine, then there's no need to roll back your drivers. Obviously, common sense. Okay cool but like i said before ladies and gentlemen this is the one that my gpu favors right now i have a 4070 super and this is what it favors okay it is 551.52 Right, now, once you've changed everything inside here, no, you don't need to scroll down to go change the corpse and the blood quality and all that shit. You don't need to do that. As long as you're on the correct driver, okay, and as long as you have this on the correct threads, and as long as you have this on 80, you are good to go. Trust me, you are good to go when it comes to the config file, and then all you're going to need to do is come to file over here at the top and say save, and then close out of this, and then close out of this. All right, let's jump straight into the next step. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the next step I highly recommend you go ahead and do is these three steps right here. You're going to press the Windows key in R to bring up the run tab, and you're going to type in temp, T-E-M-P, and then press enter. You're going to click on anything inside here, control and A to highlight everything, press delete on your keyboard, and then say do this for all current items, and say continue. Delete everything inside here, just say do this for all current items, and say try again once, do this for all current items, and say skip, and then Windows is currently, you say cancel, and then Windows is currently using these files over here. I can't delete any of these things because I have a multiple things open right now. I have OBS open, MSI Center, I have MSI Afterburner open, I have Battle.net open, and all those things, so these things can't be deleted right now. So you just close out of this, you're going to do this two more times so you're just going to press the windows key and r again this time you're just going to press the forward key on your keyboard put a shift five for percentage symbol go all the way to the front of the t shift five percentage symbol and press enter click on anything inside here especially this fucked up folder right here these fuckers right here click on it press Control and a highlight everything say delete and then delete these and then just completely delete this out of your machine do this for all kind of items try again and then do this for all kind of items and say skip and then there we go it has been deleted and you can close out of this once this has finished you go once more windows key in r and then now you're going to type in prefetch just like this and then press enter you're going to say continue to that when it asks you for command prompt just say continue click on anything inside here control and a and delete on your keyboard do this for all kind of items and then say try again and then do this for all kind of items and then say skip and then skip out of this because Windows can't delete this. It's like basically trying to delete System32 while you're still running Windows. That's like trying to delete Windows while you're on it. It can't happen. Okay, cool. Awesome. Now, something I highly recommend you go ahead and do is please go ahead once you've done all of those three things. Right click on your recycling bin, say empty and say yes to that and say continue. Delete all of that. Delete all of that nonsense that's basically just cluttering up your machine for no fucking reason. And it's called bloatware. Just remove it. I'm just going to move this to my other screen because it's not on my main screen at all. All right. Let's jump straight into the next step. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So the next step I highly recommend you go ahead and do is come to the search button over here and type in CMD and then right click on it and say run as administrator and then say yes to the command prompt. And it needs to say C Windows System 32. You're going to type in SFC spacebar forward slash scan now one word and press enter now what you're going to need to do is wait it out once it scans through your entire machine let it scan through your drives every single drive that you have it doesn't matter if it's a hard drive ssd m.2 it doesn't matter let it run through every single drive and see if you have corrupt files if you do have corrupt files windows will automatically fix it for you if you have corrupt files and windows couldn't fix it for you i highly recommend resetting your computer if you have nothing on your machine that's important just reset your machine it's very easy to do you just go over here and say reset this pc like this and press your machine and reinstall windows from fresh and i highly recommend you go ahead and do that especially if windows is telling you that it has corrupt files now those corrupt files sometimes can't be fixed through that cmd command that you're going to have to reset your computer so it's quite complicated and that's why i said ladies and gentlemen if you need any help you can email me up here right here just email me and we can go through Discord. I do charge a service fee and I'll do all of these things for you. Figure out what's wrong with your machine. If there is anything wrong with it, I can help you out as best I can. All right. Next step I highly recommend you go ahead and do is this right here. Right click on your desktop if you are an NVIDIA user like me and then open up NVIDIA Control Panel. You're going to open up an NVIDIA Control Panel like this. I'm still using the old one. Yes, I am. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm still using the old one. Okay. Don't judge me. I don't really like the new one. I don't 
because it's kind of still in a beta version. So I don't want to install something that is not completely done yet because a lot of people are actually getting problems with it. So I don't use it, okay? So I, I try and keep myself protected, basically, okay? But if you have the new one, it's quite similar settings. Um, but I, yeah, they're basically the same settings. I don't use the new one. Just keep that in mind. Bear that in mind, okay? Right now, we are on Adjust Desktop Color Settings. You can copy my settings over here. It's very good for every single game that you're going to be playing. Having a contrast at 65 and having a digital vibrance between 75 and 95, you're good to go. Just don't push it all the way to 100. There's no point in that. You are going to hurt your eyes. All right, from here, you're going to go to Adjust image settings with preview and you're going to come inside here now it's going to say use the advanced 3d image settings make sure you have the selected over here and then you can just click on take me there it's basically just going to take you to manage 3d settings and it's going to take you to this over here now all you're going to need to do is i'm not going to explain this on every single video that i fucking make for call of duty just go to my previous videos i literally explain what all of these things do so just go ahead and copy all of my things i have inside here every single thing that i have inside just go ahead and copy them and you should be good to go one thing i would mention is this over here if you do have a mid-tier graphics card please go ahead and put this at least at performance okay go to performance if you have a low-end graphics card go to high performance please go ahead and do that if you know you have a, a low-end graphics card high performance medium end graphics card performance if you have a high-end graphics card very very high-end 4090s 4080s you go to high quality i have a 4070 super i can go to high quality but i don't use it i want the maximum performance out of my machine so i go with quality over here all right the rest of the stuff is all just copy them all and you will be good to go the shader cache has not changed now for season three yet again so you don't have to put this at 100 gigs leave it at driver default and you should be good to go Right from here, you're just going to apply these settings once you've done this and then go to config surround and physics and come inside here. Please go ahead and select your dedicated graphics card. Do not say select CPU. Do not say auto select. Select your dedicated graphics card that you're currently running because this is what your physics is handled. Your graphics card handles your physics. All right. Then you're going to just say apply from here and then we can close out of this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's jump straight into the game. Let me show you the best settings for season three right now at this very moment with everything that is out for season three. It is massive, ladies and gentlemen. It is massive. So let's go over the settings for season three. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we are in the game right now and we are in the display tab. Now, something I just want to mention is this for season three and it's just been there for season one, two, three, just in general like it doesn't really matter which one you use here but it does depend on what type of machine you're running like what type of uh, setup you're running so basically if you have multiple monitors i highly recommend using full screen borderless it's actually the best for multiple monitor setups and then full screen exclusive is for people out there that has one monitor or one display or one display unit basically like a laptop or just one display with a gaming machine right now a lot of people also use full screen extended window to get more fps out of the game and it is a thing that you can go ahead and use if you're using a low-end gaming graphics card i highly recommend using this or you could use the windowed mode i know a lot of people that do use these options just in general to get more fps out of the game if they know they got a budget gaming graphics card now for people out there that's running mid-tier to high-end gaming graphics cards i highly recommend that you go with full screen exclusive when it goes to one screen and you only have one screen Screen, one dedicated screen and you have multiple screens i go with full screen borderless this is my personal preference you can do what you want to do here but this is my personal preference and this is my advice to you when it comes to season three all right let's jump straight to the next step that's very important all right so the next step is this one over here aspect ratio a lot of people don't understand this if you look very carefully on the right hand side over here it actually shows you how huge your screen should be for these type of things all right now, I play my game at 16 by 9, okay? And this is the best for me, and I highly recommend using 16 by 9. So, why it's 16 by 9? It's actually really, really good. But if you're one of the people out there that has ultra wide screens or you don't know what you should be using in general, you don't really know exactly what you should be using and you may be new to the setting, then you could just go to automatic and Call of Duty will automatically sync with the screen that you're currently using and you should be good to go. I just want to go over this just so you guys know about this. All right. I use wide 16 by 9. It's my own personal preference. All right. This one over here, we'll come to this just now. Don't click on this at all. We're only going to click on this later onwards. 
All right, display gamma, please go ahead and change this to 2.2 if you're running a display or a monitor. If you're running a gaming monitor that has like G-Sync and FreeSync and stuff like that, it can actually help you if you put this at 2.4, it can. Um, but I would still recommend going with 2.2, even if you have a gaming monitor. My own personal preference to you guys, just to let you know what you should be using, go with 2.2 over here. I use 2.4 because I actually have a very expensive gaming TV. It's not really a gaming TV, but it's an expensive TV and I play on it and it's, it's just in general, it's smooth as fuck. So this is why I use 2.4, okay? Everyone asks me, why do I use 2.4? I play on a 55-inch 4K uh, Samsung Smart TV, and it fucking runs amazing. Anyway, so this is why I use 2.4, but for you guys out there that's running monitors, 2.2, please go ahead and select it. Do not copy this setting by me. All right, from here, we're going to go to brightness. Please change your brightness from 50% to 55 or 60. Nothing higher than 60 because then the game looks washed out. Please don't do that. Constant mouse to game window. This is if you have multiple monitors like me. I have one on my left and right hand side. So if you apply this, you can't get off this main screen. All right. Then when you put it off and you disable it, you can get off of the screen. Now I'm on my left screen. And when I go over, I go to my right screen. Right. So own personal preference but don't worry this is just in the menus and when you may be in the lobby but when you're playing the game you can't physically get your mouse off the screen while you are playing so don't worry about it you can just switch it off if you want to i have mine off as personal preference over here as you can see it says nvidia reflex low latency mine is currently locked because i'm using nvidia dlss frame generation because i have a 4070 super and I use NVIDIA DLSS frame generation and it actually makes my game run really, really well. A lot of people have different opinions on it, um, but I'll give you my own personal opinion. It runs really well with my machine. I have a 14700K DDR5 memory running at 6000 megahertz, and then I have a 4070 Super and an M.2 that reads at seven gigs a second. Now, with all those components combined, I run my game really well with NVIDIA DLSS frame generation on, and then I'll show you my quality settings that I use with my specific machine. But I'm going to go over for every single person out there, low end to medium end to high end to super high end machines. Right now, if you are on this option right now and yours is not locked because you don't have a 40 series card, you maybe have a 30 series, 20 series or something lower than that. I highly recommend that you read what it says on the right hand side here, right? So off on or on plus boost okay so on plus boost is basically if you cpu bound and then on is if you gpu bound okay so just you literally just need to read what this says over here and it can be the opposite way around it literally can be the opposite way around uh, a lot of people have really good cpus with shitty gpus and then a lot of people go all out with their gpus and have shitty cpus yet again so it's it's a it's a debate on which you're gonna put on here so it's your own personal preference on which one you're gonna put on here but for now at this very moment to be honest with you on plus boost is the best setting you can use in season three even if you've got a really high-end gpu and a low-end cpu or a high-end cpu and a low-end gpu go with on plus boost still go with on plus boost go with this one over here over here go with this one over here and you should be good to go if you don't have a 40 series card and this isn't locked and you don't use frame generation or you have a 40 series card and you don't use frame generation go with on plus boost over here and you should be good to go we're going to come down and we're going to come to eco mode preset put this at custom then this i highly recommend just put it off completely this is only if you have screen tearing if you have shit happening like that i highly recommend turning it then on then obviously you're going to just turn it on to 100 percent i don't get screen tearing in my game mine's naturally off and it's off over here as well i don't get screen tearing in my menus so i turn it off custom frame rate limit ladies and gentlemen is something i'm not really going to get into i'm just going to say that i put mine on unlimited and this is how i play my game because a lot of people have their own personal preference on this they go to custom and then they put it like in a certain way over here you know like maybe i don't know they have a 240 hertz monitor over here so they put this at 240 or they have a 240 like i said maybe a 350 hertz monitor then yeah put it to the highest it can go to if you have a 144 hertz monitor then put it at 144 like that if you have a 120 hertz monitor then you put it at 120 like that then you're going to drop this to about 60 and you're going to drop this one to about 30 normal right so that's going to depend on the hertz of your monitor while you are playing your game so if you got 60 you hit 60 if you have 120 you hit 120 if you have 144 you hit 144 if you have 200 you hit 200 
if you have anything higher than that you go 300 and then that's the highest you can go to so 360 hertz all that shit and you go 300 here so i'm not going to go in depth with this this is your own personal preference everyone has their own personal preference when it comes to this with the custom that's why i don't use it i don't really bother with this that much because my gpu is not going to die because i'm selecting unlimited and i'm doing unlimited frames all the time um yeah i do a lot of overclocking when it comes to my cpu when it comes to my ram when it comes to my gpu and stuff like that and i actually don't give a fuck about this option i leave this un unlimited all the time and it's always been an unlimited since call of duty came out it's always been an unlimited and none of my components ever died my 2060 oc that i used to own before my 4070 super that i have now my friend actually owns that card right now i gave it to him and he's running this game on unlimited as well and that card is a 2060 oc it's an old card but it's not dead it won't die it will physically won't die just because you put this on unlimited please don't let people tell you that you're going to kill your gpu if you put this on unlimited because once you put this on unlimited, your GPU is not going to jump out the case and run out the front door. And then you need to chase it. And you're going to be like, well, why are you running away from me? And then you, he's going to turn around and be like, yo, no, you're putting me on unlimited. No, that's not a thing. Don't let people put that into your fucking head honestly but if you want to safe play it you can go ahead and go to custom and fucking do your own thing over there but yet again unlimited i don't give a fuck i run my game like this always and will always will all right menu render resolution native pause game rendering off focus mode is kind of cool if you have multiple screens so 100 percent and you apply it then both your screens go off my two screens on my right and left hand side just went completely black right now so put it at zero percent then i can see on both my screens obviously i want to be able to see on both my screens so why the fuck would i use this i don't know why this is an option to be honest i guess it's a nice feature for card to enable things for you not to turn your monitors off by getting up and turning them off i guess Call of Duty knows that people are lazy, um, but they are just as lazy because they smoke a lot of crack in general and they don't know what the fuck they're doing with their updates because uh, it's just skins and skins and skins and money schemes and money schemes because you just need to buy battle passes and this and that and this and they don't fix their fucking game. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to become a rant and rave. Let's get over this. Let's jump straight into the quality tab. Right, from here, we're going to go to the quality tab like this and now we are going to do this. All right, I play my game with NVIDIA DLSS, okay? Then I have frame generation on, okay? Then I have this at 80%, and I have this at quality and at 50%. With my current rig that I'm running, 14700K, I have a 4070 Super, and this is how I run my game. It runs perfectly fine like this, okay? This option over here, please don't turn it on it actually makes the game run way fucking worse i'm not going to lie to you it makes the game run like dog shit yeah sometimes you'll do really good fps but there's moments in the game where it feels like you're stuttering and you don't want that no one in this game in this community wants the game to feel like it's stuttering so turn this the fuck off if you don't want stuttering in your game turn it off okay don't turn this on Right, let's go over the rest of the steps over here. NVIDIA DLSS, okay, that's what I use. Everyone has their own personal preference, okay. Now, a lot of people prefer this one over here, the Intel upscaling. It's a really good upscaling. I used to use this with my 2060 OC, and then I would have this either at balance or at quality, and it would run really, really well. Just don't put this at performance. You're going to tear out your own fucking eyes because the game's going to look like dog shit. Please don't do that, okay? If you can, if your GPU can handle ultra quality, you can go ahead and do that, but I wouldn't recommend it. What I would recommend is either quality or balance when it comes to this upscaling over here and still 80% here still 80% here don't don't worry about this this is for 40 series cards don't worry about this option keep this at 80 if you have that over there okay and then obviously like I said either balance or quality and then you can go and do that all right now NVIDIA DLAA, I always skip over this option because it's actually a really shitty option when it comes to Call of Duty. Uh, no one uses it. I don't know a person that uses this option. No one uses this upscaling at all. Like fucking no one. All right. NVIDIA image scaling. I know a lot of people that use this over here. They go with native. It's either native, quality or balance. Okay. You can go ultra quality if your GPU can handle it. If you know you've got a decent enough GPU, go with ultra quality. But native pushes out the native resolution of your monitor. And then just you can choose your own personal uh, sharpness of the NVIDIA image scaling at native at the resolution of your monitor. Right? This is what NVIDIA image scaling can do for you. Now, 
AMD FSR 1.0, I don't recommend this, but I recommend it to very low end GPU users. You can go ahead and select this, then go to balanced over here and you should be good to go. All right. Then something I want to mention is change this from 80 to 65 like that and press enter. You can type it in there and press enter. Okay. You should be good to go when it comes to a lower generation graphics card, but if you want a little bit more quality out of your game and you still have a low end gaming graphics card in general from AMD or Nvidia, just because it says AMD doesn't mean you need an AMD card. You can run this with Nvidia cards as well. All right. AMD FSR 3.0 is the best one you can use right now at this very moment. You can either have this at balance or at quality, or you can have it at native yet again. Native will do the render resolution of your screen, of your monitor that you're currently running. Okay. Now, I would recommend native or quality or balance. Please don't select performance. Please don't select ultra performance. Your game's going to look like absolute dog shit. Go to balance, then it will balance out the quality and your performance at the same time. So you can have an equal balance game or you can go to quality so you can do a slight little bit less FPS, but your game looks really good. Or you can go to native and run native resolution, what you your screen can push out. So 1080p, 1440p, 4K, whatever the case might be, 2K, whatever the case might be, okay? Native, if you want to go native, okay? Then this, I highly recommend pushing this up yet again. You're going to push this up to 75, either 75, or you're going to hit 80. One of those two. When you do use AMD FSR 3.0, okay, please go ahead and do this, ladies and gentlemen. Please go ahead and do this. All right. From here, you can go to Fidelity Epix Cache. A lot of people still use this. This is your own personal preference when it comes to the strength of Fidelity Epix Cache. I know a lot of people that runs really high-end GPUs that still uses Fidelity Epix Cache. Why? It's because it's a favored upscaling and sharpening in the game because it makes the game look really sharp and you can see your enemies much, much easier if you want to play competitively. Now, a lot of competitive players actually use Fidelity Epix Cache. I use NVIDIA DLSS and I, I'm still competitive at at my, at my own times um i'm not that competitive anymore not that much um i just do like you know tweaks on the game and stuff like that i jump into the game to do tweaks i don't really grind and sit here with a towel and wipe my fucking sweat off from fucking sweating in rank lobbies but i know a lot of people out there that is watching my video right now does play rank play and stuff like that so if you want a good rank gameplay go with fidelity to fix cash it makes the game really sharp makes it much easier to play and gives you more fps in general and it makes the game run really really well not going to lie to you it makes it run really really well you can run at 80 percent over here or yet again you can run it at 65 and you should be good to go and your game will run perfectly fine now something i want to mention is this over here if you're going to go with let's say for instance nvidia image scaling and you have it at native or whatever option you have here please come down over here and then have this at normal okay and then this one at normal as well you can either put it at low or at normal when you have nvidia image scaling okay when you have amd fsr 1.0 i highly recommend you come down here and then go to low here and then this one over here normal that's how this will look for amd fsr 1.0 and then for 3.0, I would recommend you put this at normal and that at normal. When you run AMD FSR 3.0, when you're running a mid-tier to high-end graphics card, if you know you've got a high-end, you go to here and you go normal and then this one at high. If you've got a high-end GPU, lower end, you go back to normal over here, normal and then AMD FSR 3.0, and you should be good to go. Now, when you come to Fidelity FS Cache, when it comes to Fidelity FS Cache, I highly recommend leaving it at normal, and leaving it at normal, and you should be good to go. All right, that is the settings I would recommend for you guys, and this is the settings that I'm using. Like I said before, I use this over here, like that. That's how I use my game. And then I have this at 80%, like this. Press Enter. And then I have frame generation on. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I had a lot of people ask me, yo, dude, don't you get like input latency and like stuttering in the game when you use frame generation? I don't. I don't see it at all. I physically don't. And I test this game a lot. Like a fuck ton. Holy shit, I tested it a lot. I don't see any like uh, stuttering and stuff like that. If you're experiencing that, that might be your machine. Like I said, if you guys want a optimization through me, myself, Go email me and I can help you out through Discord. I do charge a fee, like I said, but I can help you out as best I can. Anyways, let's go down with this. Depth of field off. I don't know who plays with this, but.
But yet again, it's your own personal preference. If you play with Depth of Field, it's a multiplayer game. Why the fuck would you have it on in the first place? But yet again, it's your own personal preference. All right. Detail quality level, low. Please put this at low. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm running a 4070 Super. I can run this game at everything on the best settings and I would still do really high FPS. But I want competitive settings and I want the best FPS. So this is for everyone out there. You can have a low end gaming graphics card to medium to high end to the highest end. Still run this. It's competitive settings. Go with low here. Particle resolution, very low. Bullet impacts, you can put this on because then you can actually see where the wall was shot at or if the wall was shot at or whatever the case might be. It doesn't affect FPS. It doesn't affect your CPU or your RAM or your GPU. Turn it the fuck on. All right. This over here, the effects, turn it off. You don't need to see the effects in the game. You really don't. Shader quality is something that a lot of people has mentioned in my comments and they were like, yo, dude, shouldn't this be on high? No, it should not. Put this at low because the, the thing is about this, what I want to explain is, do you want to see that? That there's a crane here and then it's reflecting on the water? Or would you have no water? And yes, there's still a crane there, but it's not reflecting. So there's no reflections happening in the water and stuff like that. You don't really need to see that. If you're a competitive player and all you want to do is run around and kill people and also have more FPS, then put this at low. Don't put this to medium or high. Leave it at low and you should be fucking good to go. Let's common fucking knowledge. Just turn it the fuck down. Because you really don't even need this option. To be honest, they could have just deleted this option. You don't need it, okay? You really don't. I know a lot of people that has really high-end GPUs that don't use it. I have a 4070 Super and I don't use it. I don't because there's no point in it. All right, on demand text is streaming, turn it the fuck off, turn it the fuck off, and turn it the fuck off, and done. All right, local text is streaming quality. This is something I would recommend people put on normal if you're running a 30 series, like a 3070 and higher. Any card between a 3070 and higher. Please don't put this at normal if you're running a 10 series or a 20 series. Please don't do that. Then you put that at low. If you're running anything lower than a 3070, put it at low. If you're running anything higher than that, go to normal and you'll be good to go. All right. Shadow and lighting plays a very big role on this game's FPS and how the game performs. Okay. Now, my game, you saw how my game looks when I started this video. You saw how the game looks, how the map looks, how everything looks. It looks perfectly fine. And I have all of these settings over here. Shadow and lighting just eats FPS and does nothing in the game. Yeah, it slightly does a little bit of detail, but you don't need to see it. Okay, so shadow quality, very low, screen space, shadows off, ambient occlusion, off, off, always off, leave it the fuck off and done. That's for single player actually, because then you can put this at both if you're playing single player. But right now we're playing Warzone, so please leave it the fuck off. Screen space reflections, off, okay. Static reflection quality, low. Tessellation, off, off, always off, leave it the fuck off and done. Volumetric quality, low. Physics quality, don't need to see the physics low weather grid volumes this you go to off and then your water quality as well turn it the fuck off you do not need to see the water caustics or the wave wetness like honestly are you gonna jump out of the plane and go land by the water and then watch the scenery or are you gonna jump out the plane and go fuck people up what are you gonna be doing in cod you are not jumping out to watch the scenery so turn this the fuck off and get it over and done with all right and then you apply these settings from here then we're going to go to the view tab. Now the view tab is your own personal preference, but something I highly recommend you go ahead and do is take advantage of this over here. Inverted flash. A lot of people don't take advantage of this. And then there's another one, which is this one over here. Take advantage of this as well. Put your film grain to 0.00, .00 so your game actually looks a little bit better and it doesn't look like pixelated. Like you have a, I don't know, 19... 76 fucking tv i don't know just put it at 0, 0.00 please you do not want your game to look like you're playing it on a calculator so leave it at 0, 0.00 put it all the way down okay and you should be good to go inverted flash take advantage of it okay so your screen goes black instead of white it's really nice on the eyes especially when you get flash banged and your screen goes completely black because you can hear the flash bang go off no, it's not going to look like your game crashed. I've seen people say, don't put this on because you're going to think your game's crashing. Bullshit. You're going to hear a flashbang go off and then your screen's going to go black. And then it will come back to normal again. And yet again, it's not your whole screen that goes black. It's only in the middle. On the edges of the screen, you could still see. 
So take advantage of this, please, ladies and gentlemen. But yet again, it's your own personal preference. I can't tell you what to do in the view tab, but this plays a very big role, ladies and gentlemen. It plays a very big role in your game. Please go ahead and put this at 0, 0.00. Right from here, we're going to go to this over here, which is interface. We're going to come to color customization and we're going to come over here. You're going to have you as your own personal color. Choose your own personal color. Have your team and your party the same colors, whatever color you want to choose here. Your enemy, you're going to come inside here and you can actually apply a custom color or create a custom color inside here and then choose what you want. Whatever color suits you the best. I have mine as magenta pink, always had mine as magenta pink. And then I apply my custom color and leave it like this. All right. I'm going to come down and then you're going to have this at filter two. You guys can go ahead and try out filter 3. That pink, that magenta pink, will turn into purple once I click on filter 3. Watch this. Now it's completely dark pink. Now, you can either choose filter 3 or filter 2. But right now, at this very moment, as your own personal preference, as a person that knows that, hey, this looks the best, go with filter 2, go with both, go with 100%, go with 100%, and you should be good to go on the settings for season 3. Now, the most important step you're going to need to do is this right here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so this is the most important step that you're going to need to do after applying all of these settings. Now, before you jump out of my video, listen to me, please listen to me. You're going to click on restart shader preloading and you're going to click on restart. Then you're going to restart your game either through Battle.net or Steam, whatever platform you're playing it through. Then when you launch your game at the top left corner, it's going to install your shaders. Let your shaders install. Click anywhere on your screen once. Once the shader starts installing, click anywhere on your screen just once. Anywhere on your screen, just like a click, you know, just like a like a click, you know, anywhere on your screen and then leave it. Let your shaders install to 100%. Then when you start moving your mouse around, you'll see uh, a square block will come up on this side and it'll say 100% complete. Then you are done, okay? Then you should be good to go. Ladies and gentlemen, if this video worked for you, smash that like button, leave a comment down below. And yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I have been sick. So sorry about that. And, you know, like I have been sick for a couple of days now and it's just been, been off. And my mom literally had a neck fusion recently, so I had to go to the hospital a lot. So I've been busy. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, whoever's watching this video right to the end, um, to be honest with you, just leave a comment. And I know that you watched this video from the beginning to the end. Leave a comment down below. Giga Chad. As always, ladies and gentlemen, I hope this helped you. And as always, peace out.